Next word, back to David Young. David, with regards to education, what role should the federal government be, or what role should the federal government have in education? Uh, I would say that the, really the only role I see would be just enforcing any discrimination uh, in education. And that could be done really with civil rights or the Department of Justice. I would, I'm not like the fact that the federal government is taking over our schools. I would like to see a time when the power is in your hands, the parents' hands and school boards' hands. So we have to be very careful with what the Department of Education is doing. Common Core. Is a bad, bad, bad idea. And we need to make sure that we need to make sure that we need to make sure that we're educated on what what money we're taking from the federal government and why. It seems like too often we're just too eager to take any available funds and we get them and they're connected to the program. And next thing you know, we are holding something awful in our hands that we're having to force on our students and teachers. So. Power back to the states with uh, education, power back to the parents, power back to the schools. At the federal level, I would like to see the part of education gone away. Thank Next for State Senator Ernst. In regards to tax reform, are you a fair tax? flat tax, or change the current progressive income tax, or other type of tax? Thank you. Well, I do agree that we need to do something about our taxes, and I think full elimination of the IRS is the best way to go. They've been abusive, they are horrible. Uh, we need reform all the way around. Um, and to do that, you would have to institute a fair tax. So I would say I'm intrigued by the fair tax. I think it is a great way to go. We're capturing a lot of revenue. We're replacing the revenue that's pulled in by the IRS right now. A flat tax is also a great idea and something that we need to think about. I think any of these ideas are worth looking at. You know, what is right for all of the American public, we will need to sort through that. But I agree that the, the uh, tax structure needs to be fat or flatter, it needs to be fairer, it needs to be finite, and our families need to know how much they are going to pay as well as our businesses out there. So again, I will take a look at any of those. I am very intrigued though by the fair tax. Thank you. Matt Whitaker, the, the recent school shooting in Newtown, Connecticut spurred new proposals for gun control legislation. What, if any, gun control legislation could you foresee yourself support? None. I think gun control... <laughs> gun control is me controlling my guns and you controlling your guns. Ladies and gentlemen, we have plenty of gun laws. As the United States Attorney for five and a half years, I prosecuted people that weren't supposed to have guns, that did. We have plenty of gun laws. We have gun laws that prevent mentally ill people from having guns. We have guns, laws that prevent people from, that have felonies, that domestic abusers. All the folks that you would categorize that you would not trust with a gun, we already have laws that apply to those folks. What we need to do is improve our system, like the NICS background check. We need to make sure that the mental health records and court adjudications and the like are interacting with the state system, and that the instant background check system works. But ladies and gentlemen, from my perspective, as a proud gun owner, we have plenty of gun laws. They just need to be enforced, and we need to be always respectful of loaded guns and teach our children how to exercise their Second Amendment, whether they hunt or shoot targets or protect us in the police or in the military, we have to teach respect for guns, but we do not need any more gun laws. Next, Sam, I want to touch base and switch gears a little bit to immigration. I'd like you to talk a little bit about what 
what should be our solution as a nation for the 11 to 12 million illegal and undocumented immigrants? Thank you. I know a little bit about this. In 2006, I was asked by the United States Citizenship and Immigration Service to help them uh, develop a plan for the implementation of that time, uh, the McCain-Kennedy bill that was uh, being considered by the United States Senate. Uh, my recommendations to them uh, then and what I believe now. We secure the border and we secure that so not a fly gets across, not a fly gets into this country uh, illegally. And if the ABC news people can track down a terrorist in, in Benghazi, we ought to be able to track the 40% of the immigrants that are here that don't are overstaying their visas. We ought to be able to do that. We should be able to register all of these people that are here. We have to, and I think that it, it's um, improbable that we'll be able to deport them. But through this securing the border for four years, registering the people, in, enforcing E-Verify, which is the employment verification system, and then making sure that if people have violated the law through federal felonies by using identi identity theft, that they must leave the country. No one should be awarded citizenship in this country and should be rewarded for that by breaking the law. Never. Scott, next I would like you to come forward and I would like you to talk about the number one economic issue that you see our country facing over the next two to six years as your turn if you become elected as a United States Senator. Thank you. That's a very good question. Um, and there's a lot of different roads you can go down with that. One of the biggest things we have to look out for with our economy also falls into the category of national security. When you look at our trade secrets getting stolen from computer hackers, uh, 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 trademark infringement, patent infringement, people making knockoff American products overseas, we have to look out for our economy that we're losing billions of dollars by having all of our ideas get shipped overseas. Another thing we have to also have to look at is different ways to lower our manufacturing costs, different ways to attract people to, uh, to want to manufacture their goods here in the States, different ways to keep people employed here in the States. Right now, especially when you're dealing with uh, technology sector jobs and products that can be done completely through email, we're losing out on a lot of jobs that stuff's getting done overseas and they email back to us as for technology products. So we've got to figure out ways to keep those projects here in the United States. Also, when it comes to the economy, we're going to make other countries want to, we're going to have to make other countries pay a premium to do business with the United States. We have the best products, we have the safest products, we have the safest food. We have the highest quality of every product in the world. Therefore, we have to figure out a way to earn the money for that and in turn keep our jobs here. 